Poco reached the big station and arranged the trucks. Then he went on to the shed and asked politely if he could come in. Jack was not pleased to see a diesel. But presently, when he found out that Boko knew Edward, he became more friendly. And by the time that Boko had told him all about Bill and Ben, they were laughing together just like old friends. Have they ever tried to play a trick on you? asked Boko. Oh, goodness me, yes, chuckled Duck. Edward is the only one who knows how to keep them in order. You know, went on Duck, sometimes I call them the bees. Good name, chuckled Boko. They're terrors when they start buzzing around. Just then, James bustled in. What's that, duck? Are you terrified of bees? They're only insects, after all. So, don't let that bus box diesel tell you any different. His name is Boko and he didn't, we... I wouldn't care interrupted James, if hundreds of them were swarming around. I just blew at them and they bus off. Bus, 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 retorted Duck. James retired into a huff. James was to pull the express the next morning. And when Duck brought his coaches to the platform, it was crowded. Mind your bags, mind your bags, two porters were taking a loaded trolley to the front van. Fred drove and Bert walked behind. Careful Fred, careful, warned Bert. But Fred was in a hurry and he didn't listen. Suddenly, an old lady appeared in front. Fred stopped dead, but the luggage laid the forward and burst the lid of a large wooden box. Some bees flew out, just as James came backing down. They began to explore the station. Someone shouted a warning and the platform cleared like magic. The bees were too sleepy to be cross. They found the empty station cold. James Fireman was trying to couple the train. They bust around him, hopefully. They wanted him to mend their hive. Then they could go back to the warm again. But the fireman didn't understand. He thought they would sting him. He gave a yell and ran back to the cab, crouching with his jacket over his head. The driver didn't understand either. He swatted at the bees with his shovel. The bees, disappointed, Turn their attention to James. James' boiler was nice and warm. The bees warned around it happily. Bus off, bus off, he hissed. He made smoke, but the wind blew it away and the bees stayed. At last, one settled on his hot smoke box. It burned his feet. The bee thought that James had stung it on purpose. It stung James back, right in the nose. Eee! whistled James. He had enough. 
and so had his driving firemen. They started without waiting for the guard's whistle. They didn't notice till it was too late that they had left the entire train behind. In the end, it was up to Boko to pull the express. He was worried at first about leaving his truck, but the duck promised to look after them. So it was arranged. He managed to gain back some of the lost time, and the fat controller was very pleased with him. No one seemed to notice when James came back to the shed. They were all talking about a new kind of beehive on wheels. It was red, they said. Then they all said buzz, buzz, buzz and laughed loudly. James just thought that the mainline engines were being very silly.